Thank you for joining Davidson College Presbyterian Church in worship. Whether you are listening to WDAV or watching on YouTube, we're glad that you've tuned into this pre-recorded service of worship for the week of April 26th. Today is the day we're calling Caring for Creation Sunday, marking the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and God's call for us to care for the earth that God created. Whether you're a member or a friend, if you are in need of assistance, please call the church office and leave a message or email ralexander at dcpc.org and let us know how we can be of assistance to you. Again, thank you for joining us in worship. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this Lord's Day where we celebrate our calling to be good stewards of all of God's creation. Let's sing God's praises this morning. This is a version of Psalm 8. Let's sing together. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. sounding good out there wherever you are. Let's continue this next song called Indescribable. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea, creation's revealing your majesty. From the colors to the fragrance of spring every creature unique in the song that it sings all exclaiming indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing Awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, You are amazing God. Who has told every lightning bolt where it should go? Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow? Imagine the sun and give source to its light, yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. None can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. Struck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim, You are amazing God. You are amazing God. 
indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing God. All powerful, untamable, awestruck, we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim. Uncontainable, you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. incomparable, unchangeable. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing God. You see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing God. All right. Sounds good. It's beautiful out here where I am on this hillside, and I hope uh, that you can look out from wherever you are and see the beauty of God's creation. We're going to sing this lovely hymn, just a few verses of For the Beauty of the Earth. For the beauty of the earth for the glory of the sky, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. beauty of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of night. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our hymn of Thyself, best gift divine, to the world so freely give. For that great, great love of thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. our hymn of grateful praise. Amen. We invite all God's creatures to worship with us. All our kin living on this planet from the busiest bee to the loudest lion. We remember our animal relatives who have become extinct. Dinosaurs, dodos and Texas gray wolves, Oregon bison, and the woolly mammoths. <coughs> we join the natural world in praising God. All gliding eagles and watchful cougars, gorillas in the mist, polar bears in the snow, and whales in the oceans below. <coughs> We summon the fellow creatures we have come to love whom God loves. The stray cat and the backyard dog, the goat, the pony, and the little lamb. All 
our animal family in all the world, raise your voices to the skies in a festival of praise. <laughs> and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, O brother, son with golden beam, O sister, moon with silver gleam, sing praises, Alleluia. Take your part and worship God with humble heart. Alleluia, alleluia. All creatures bless the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. Sing praises, alleluia. They say confession is good for the soul. And that's why we come every week as individuals and as a community to unload, if you will, to let go of all that baggage that we carry around about ways that we've lived that have been inconsistent with our calling as God's people. And today, especially as we think about earth care and our responsibility to be good stewards of this amazing creation that is a gift from God. We want to let go of the burdens that we carry around about how we have failed to do what God might have called us to do or how we've done things that are not consistent with who God calls us to be. So I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession. You should find the words printed on your screen or in the bulletin. Join me in this unison prayer of confession. Let us pray. Creator God, the world is yours and all that is in it. The heavens declare your handiwork. The earth sings your praise. The rhythm of life began with your heartbeat of love. The colors flowed from your imagination and the intricacy of the microscope demonstrates your skill. We confess that we do not honor your work or show our gratitude. We proclaim our handiwork, sing our praises, and seek to enslave creation to our will. Forgive us. Have mercy on us for our betrayal of our call to stewardship. Enable us to live in harmony with creation and in service to your love for this world. And now as we enter into a time of silent confession, know that the living, running water of Jesus Christ can wash away all of our sin. Let us pray in silence.
Do you hear that? Listen. The Spirit blows in a new day and a new way of living in right relationship with God and creation. There's hope, for in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Friends, it's so good to be together for worship, even virtually, to remember the rhythm of life as we remembered a few weeks ago, coming in to worship, being sent out again to serve in the world. I'm so glad that you are here joining us in this time of worship with Davidson College Presbyterian Church. I want to remind you to take a moment to fill out the friendship pad. You can find a link for that in the chat section. Click on that and go to our online uh, friendship pad and fill that in. If you can't figure that out, just send an email or text to Stephanie Malashiski and let her know that, that you and your family are a part of our worship today. I want to remind you that our ministries continue to go on during this pandemic. So if you are able to give, we invite you to do that either by having a check sent to the church. Harriet Rosebro is still in the uh, finance office every week. And also you can give online at dcpc.org. There are also ways to donate food. We're collecting food at the congregation house and twice a week delivering that to Feed NC, formerly known as Mooresville Soup Kitchen. There are closest neighbors receiving food donations and those are uh, food donations are going to help lots of people in need in our area. So if you're able to get a few extra canned goods or non-perishable food items when you go shopping, just drop those by the congregation house. We want to also remind you that uh, we have started a new ministry for the, first, for the next few weeks, every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. and noon. We will have daily prayer. You can uh, find a link for that at our Facebook page or online. You can also contact uh, one of the pastors or Rhonda Boggs. If you would like to participate, contact Rhonda, rboggs at dcpc.org and she'll be glad to send you a link to participate in our daily prayer. It lasts about 15 minutes or so, and it's a great way to be in prayer throughout the week as we're in between Sunday worship. So thank you again for joining us for this service of worship. And as we continue our worship, we're glad to have Donna Hatfield, a member of our green group, who will share a little bit about what it means for Davidson College Presbyterian Church to be an earth care congregation. Welcome, Donna. Good morning. I'm Donna Hatfield, and I'm part of the Green Group, a small group of people at DCPC who have, were instrumental in getting DCPC certified as an earth care congregation. Earth care congregations is a program of the PCUSA which encourages and supports and recognizes churches that have pledged to feature earth care programming in the four areas of facilities, worship, education, and outreach. DCPC became an earth care congregation in 2010 at the suggestion of John Kirkendall and after the work by the Green Group to assemble the uh, application materials. In the past 10 years, DCPC has embarked on a major uh, upgrade of their building, which has increased the en energy efficiency of the main building. Uh, in worship, we have featured uh, earth care themes in preaching, prayer, liturgy, and music. And we've also held a number of services outdoors. Our Jubilee class in adult education and our Vacation Bible School have studied issues of water availability and environmental justice. And we've provided several programs on reducing energy in your own home. Each year at Town Day, our DCPC booth features a child-friendly craft or activity having to do with nature. 
This commitment to earth care is ongoing. We need to recertify our church each year. And with that in mind, we are going to hold a meeting this coming Wednesday evening by Zoom from 7 to 8 p.m. for anyone interested in brainstorming with us new and fresh ways that we might bring care of God's earth into our programming. If you have a passion for God's earth and taking care of it, I hope you'll join us at this meeting on Wednesday evening. Please contact Pastor Robert Alexander to get a link to the meeting, and I hope I'll see you there. Thank you for listening. book about Earth Day since today's Earth Day. This book is called The Earth is Good. The Earth is Good. The sun is good. is good. The trees and birds and bees are good. The flowers are good. I knew it's going to play in part of the chicken. The mouse, the worm, the soil are good. The wind and rain are good. The rivers are good. The fish are good. <laughs> Took me a minute to find them. The oceans. And whales are good. The mountains are good. The sun is good. The day is good. The moon, the stars, the night are good. The earth is good. And you are good. <laughs> Did you like that book? Yeah. 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 What good things in the earth have you seen this week? The new life. You've seen new life? Mm -hmm. Which new life have you seen? Like new flowers and the baby birds. Mm -hmm. Oh, and baby birds mm -hmm. that we have? Mm -hmm. Yep, we have baby birds in our nest mm -hmm. and flowers growing. Mm -hmm. Jack, have you seen things in the earth this week that are good? Well, I see an airplane. You saw an airplane? <laughs> That's above the earth. <laughs> You're right. And the fresh, bright green grass. And the fresh, bright green grass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did you know Pastor Robert has bunnies in his yard, baby bunnies? Yeah. Remember when we went owling, I saw that bunny? And we saw a bunny and some owls the other day? Yes. Yeah. Daddy, do you have any questions? So, do you know who made all this stuff? The trees, the earth, the ocean, the sky? God. God did. Why do you think the book says that all of that stuff is good? Mm. Can you try? No. 
not sure. I don't know. Can I get off? In a minute. <laughs> but yeah. God made all those things and God made all of them good. We don't know why they, God made them good. I guess that was a tough question. But we do know that God made them good. That's what the Bible tells us. And since God made you and you and you and me, we're good too. And we have a place on the earth, just like all the stuff in that book that is also good. Birdie. Everything matters to God, everybody. Birdie. Even the bird you just saw. <laughs> okay. Another bird. You ready to say a prayer? Mm -hmm. okay. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this time to think about your creation. Help us to know that each of us can care for the earth. When we care for the earth and the creatures that live in it, we show our love for you. The earth is our home and we are so glad for this gift. Amen. 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 Our first reading from the Bible today comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 8. Listen to the word of God as it comes to us in a song of praise for the gift of creation. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading from the Bible today comes from a letter to the Christians in Rome, written by the great evangelist Paul in the middle of the first century. At a time when many of us see the world groaning in pain and running a fever in terms of global warming, this passage speaks about coming redemption and about freedom from decay. Listen to the word of God from Romans chapter 8, as Paul writes about praying for relief and trusting in the intervention of the Holy Spirit. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who of the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. 
Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final reading from the Bible is set on the first Easter Sunday. Two disciples left Jerusalem, and while they were on the road out of town, Jesus met them and walked with them, although they did not recognize him. Our passage picks up at the end of that long walk with Jesus in Luke chapter 24. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. With those words, the writer of Psalm 8 joins the biblical chorus of praise to our creator God. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, the song continues, glorifying a God whose voice exploded a universe into being 14 billion years ago, later set our star aflame. God's power tamed in the touch that stretches the fabric of the sky, unfurling the leaves of the trees, painting with a palette of colors that adds life to life. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. In response to the majesty of God, The psalmist asks a wonderful question about this telescoping view of God that brings God's vision down to the four billion year old third rock from our sun. The psalmist asks, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? It's a good question. The potential problem comes in the answer the psalmist provides to her question, the problem threatening to tarnish the alleluias of her praise. Yet you have made them a little lower than God, crowning them with glory and honor. Now the potential problem lies not so much in the answer, but in the emphasis we place in the answer. Yet you have made them a little lower than God, a little lower, a little lower. You have made them close to God and human beings with our lack of humility emphasize our proximity to God, elevating ourselves in relation to creation. We so enjoy those verses that follow. You have given human beings dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. Oh, we enjoy that place in creation. The problem is we want to stay in the places of elevation that trick us into thinking that we are in fact like God. In full view of the things we think we control, things we think we own, the things that are in fact God's. We like to emphasize the word little to trick ourselves into thinking that we are in the place and perspective of God. But one of the truths of the coronavirus pandemic is that we have been brought down to earth 
humbled by the truth that we are not God, that in the battle for life and for death, the victory is ultimately God's and not completely ours. And so we are brought to earth, to the soil, which the great spiritual poet of the earth, Wendell Berry says, is the great connector of our lives, the source and destination of all. When it comes to being brought down to earth, one might say we've been grounded, grounded in many ways with stay at home orders. And one of the consequences of that grounding is that we spend less time in our cars. You know, in a couple weeks ago, most of us would have loved the idea of spending less time in our cars. Yet it's probably been a little harder than we were willing to admit not to hop in the car every day. But have you noticed that creation's responded to our inactivity and our absence on the roadways and waterways? Cleaner water around our country and world, cleaner air. Creation's responding with deep gratitude and new life to our absence on the water and on the roads. Have you seen the pictures on the internet? Take a look at these pictures. Residents of Northern India you can see the Himalayan range 100 miles away for the first time in 30 years. Maps of emissions over China show a drastic reduction in nitrogen dioxide produced from burning fuel. Goats are taking over the streets of towns and whales. Mountain lions wandering through people's backyards in Colorado. And even our own Los Angeles showing clearer, cleaner air. As we see those pictures of a renewal of creation at a time when we are reducing our production, as we see this renewal of life at a time when we are at rest, it's a reminder that as far as creation is concerned, we're just one factor among many, one factor, and we're definitely not God. One might also say that in those pictures, we see creation's foretaste of the resurrection that is promised in Jesus Christ. It is creation's participation in our Easter proclamation. As we see these pictures of rebirth at a time when we are at rest, it is a reminder about the life that is given to all of creation and about the fact that while the psalmist and the writer of Genesis speak of the dominion of humanity over creation, over what the Celtic theologians call the cathedral of sky and sea, the sacred ground upon which we are blessed to trod, that dominion has always been custodial. And at some point, the one who made all that is seen and unseen, the one who gave us this beauty to behold, the one who called it good, there will be a reckoning required by the one who gave us dominion over what is the Lord's. And about God's pleasure and continued interest in this gift of earth and life, we do well to remember the book of Colossians, where about the redemption and resurrection one in Jesus Christ, the writer says, all things, whether in heaven or on earth, were reconciled to God through Jesus. We do well to remember the book of Revelation, in which there is a new heaven and a new earth and where the healing of the nations is tied to the leaves on the trees that line the city and the new earth of God. About this relationship of creation to the redemption and the resurrection, one in Jesus Christ, Presbyterian minister and poet J. Barry Shepherd wrote a poem this Easter during our pandemic lockdown. Easter alone, J. Barry Shepherd. There is something to be said for solitary. Those initial appearances, you may recall, were not made before acclaiming throngs with sounding brasses, immaculate ranks of lilies, golden banners, alleluias, and the like. But to one or two, three at the most, battered, broken souls seeking solace for their grief and fear. This morning's virus isolated sunrise, plague bear of all the customary celebration, friendly handshakes, warm embraces. He's risen, risen indeed. Finds me at Atlantic's edge. Soul company, the occasional chickadee, my foraging terrier, light breeze and gentle waves against the rocks, my organ repertory. Awakening bird song through the trees, my antiphonal call and response. No one was missing. 
This vast community of life and light, flowing liquid and unyielding rock, one immense eternal benediction holding me close despite informing me full and clear that all is given, all is now, and everything is yet to be. Everything is yet to be, and yet there is still what is now. A creation that we are charged to care for. And we have an opportunity to avail ourselves of this pandemic lockdown, to reevaluate our relationship with a nature that has shown what happens when we are not as involved in its degradation, but instead giving to creation the rest that it needs. We might on the other side of this pandemic embrace the call of the folks who led the celebration of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, calling us to be advocates for the earth regarding climate change, regarding the protection of the environment, to take on the role of the Lorax from our children's books, the Lorax who speaks for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, especially at a time when there's deregulation of environmental policy we might renew our role as advocates for the earth. Another thing we might do on the other side of the lockdown is to continue to enjoy our communion with all of creation when we are no longer bound to small plots of land and inside of our homes, reveling with the brief forays outside. Will we continue to go outside? Will we, when we are enabled to do it fully, embrace this communion with creation? Will we still go to Abersham and Fisher Farms and ride on the Greenway? Will we take responsibility for being part of creation in full communion with the one who made all that is and called it good? We have a chance to do differently on the other side of the lockdown, but will we? Will we do differently in relation to what astronomer Carl Sagan called the pale blue dot on which we live? Sagan coined this phrase after seeing a picture taken by the Voyager spacecraft. It was a picture of Earth four billion miles away. About that pale blue dot, we'll hear Carl Sagan's words in a moment. But as we see that image, as we hear his words, we who claim a Christian faith, Prayerfully, hopefully, we hear the psalmist's words, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, beyond the earth. And how excellent is the Lord's name when we answer the call to care for what God has created. And that's we... here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, Everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Like it or not, for the moment, the earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is a humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known.
Here I come to your throne I fall on my knees Where I pour out my soul You're all I need Rain upon my life Fill my heart Take this moment, God I am yours Here I lift my hands in worship Here I stand before my King As my eyes behold your glory Everything changes the Stillness I hear call out my name Where your whispers of love wash all my shame Rain upon my life, fill my heart Take this moment, God, I am yours Here I lift my hands in worship, here I As my eyes behold your glory, everything changes. Here I lift my hands in worship. Here I stand before my King. As my eyes behold your glory, everything changes. Everything changes. Let us now gather up our prayers before God. Holy God, God who spins the planets and sings the stars to shine, God of all, we praise you and pray to you, for all of creation glistens with your glory. We praise you for these beautiful spring days that remind us of new life all around, even in the midst of pandemic, when stay-at-home orders force us to slow down and spend more time with you. In this season, Lord, there's so much that summons us to marvel. So open our eyes and fill our hearts that we might see you in what surrounds us and remember to offer our praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of all creation, we praise you and we pray to you. For all creation glistens with your glory, and all creation groans at our indifference. For your children continue to fear unclean water, drought, raging wildfires, and locust swarms. Our cities are quaking as seas are rising, while we continue to debate about a reality we have the privilege to not yet endure. God, how you must despise our worship of convenience that floats as plastic islands in your oceans. And how offended must you be as we erase the colors of your great barrier reef before our children get to see. God, all creation groans under the weight of our indifference, and we need so badly for you to help us hear it. So help us lament, holy God. Help us to mourn like you do for what we've done to your earth. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. God of all creation, we strive to see your glory. We need to hear the groaning. But to be honest, God, all of it's hard, for our hearts are as broken as this earth. We're so easily overwhelmed by what we should do, frozen by the enormity of all that's wrong, distracted by our own things, big things that consume our being. We've misappropriated our hope shrinking it to what we can see, delegating it to those who profit at the expense of your creation, forgetting that you are the God of all creation, that it was you who breathed us into being, you who created us and called us to create like you. So God, if you could do what only you can do, if you could take what is broken, our hearts, our priorities, this earth, 
and hold us, change us, love us into something new. If you could just do what you do, God, and create again, breathe life into our dusty souls again, use our broken hearts and our willing but weary hands, and call beauty out of what is broken. Make us to be creators of healing and wholeness, for we want to want with you, to work with you for a better day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So God of all creation, we lift our voices to you as your one body, committed to being creators of your goodness, as we pray the prayer you taught for this and every day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we go out into the world today to serve God, let's remember that part of building God's kingdom on this earth is taking care of creation and being good stewards of all that God has given so that all the earth might be healed and might enjoy the wonder of creation. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power. your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for your our joy and prize, to see the captive's hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace, we lay down our lives for heaven's cause. church we pray revive this earth all right sing it out build your kingdom here let the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and Street.
As we get ready to depart from our time of worship today, a few brief words for you. Number one, we are thankful that this afternoon, 16 people are joining our congregation, even in the midst of all that's going on in the world. People want to become part of our community of faith, and we give thanks to God. Number two, I recently spoke to a sustainability director who said the amount of time that we spend recycling, planting, doing all those good things for the earth, we should be spending as much time on advocacy, that it is only with economic and political wholesale change that we will honor truly the gift of God's green earth and the life entrusted to our care. And so I hope with some of this extra time during the pandemic that you would become an advocate for change, especially at a time of environmental deregulation. We need your voices. You can learn more about that through our green team. Third, I hope that today you get outside and enjoy God's gracious gift. Be in communion with the Creator and all that the Lord has made. Going outside, being a part of this, it is an expression of gratitude. And finally, after the benediction, and after the passing of the peace, don't turn off your computers right away. We have a special slideshow. It includes pictures from you, our members, as well as music by our own Robert Alexander. And now we go forth with the words of the Celtic theologians who understood the connection between the spirit and the earth. And it is in their spirit that we say, deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, Deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the gentle night to you, moon and stars pour their healing light on you, deep peace of Christ, of Christ the light of the world to you, deep peace of Christ to you. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. This is my father.